Tanya Standard Scott. I'm with the African American Economic Recovery Think Tank located in Jacksonville, Florida. I'd like to take this time out once again to talk to my people because I love talking to my people, the African American community all over the country. At this present time, we are coming up pretty soon to election time. And it's very important that we get involved now to know who your elected officials are. And why are we on this subject about elected officials and what they are doing or not doing, we must be conscious of this fact. We must be more civic engaged in running our neighborhood, community, and city. Once again, that's very important. In Jacksonville, Florida, we have close, once again, 300,000 plus African Americans in the city. And when you look at the people who are advocating for our concerns is less than 100. Well, to be honest with you, it's probably less than 20, to be honest with you, about 20. Why is that? Especially with all the issues that we have in this city and in our community. Why we are not civic engaged? And the reason why I say this to you is because I am there in City Hall. And I see leadership overall. The leadership is only concerned about themselves. When I say that, when I say leadership, I'm talking about all 19 of them. Because you can look at the products that they are putting out, the services the recap of what they have done over one, two, three, to up to five years. And you'll see, nothing has changed. You have more taxes and fees, whatever you want to call it, but it's all taxpayer money. Jacksonville is not decreasing the crime at all. They'll come out and say crime is down, but Crime is up all over the city, not just murder. Don't let them play them with the numbers. Because if you really look at the numbers, right, you see a little change going on, but there's a lot of pathology going on when it comes to crime in Jacksonville. But we'll talk about that later. The most important thing I want my people to talk about, think, no, sorry about that. The most important thing that I want my people to understand that we are failing ourselves. That's right. And people can say, well, you know, most, uh, quite a few African Americans in this city uh, feel pretty good, uh, or they good, have good quality of life. But overall, we are second class citizens. Why? Not because of racism, because our own leadership, African American leadership, especially in the political, political circle, political circle, <laughs> yes, very, uh, we have a problem there, we have city council members continue to look out for themselves and their friendship so they can, when they leave office, they can get them a cushion job, once again we'll talk about that. Yes, but you look back through history, uh, since consolidation, you see some of the same people who have been around from 15 to 30 years from the African American community in leadership. And look at the community. Yeah, look for yourself, people. Don't listen to me. Look at the community. We have opportunities in Jacksonville to change our paradigm. But you must, we, sorry about that, we must get rid of the leadership that we have at the present time. And the best way, we need to prepare ourselves. Start reaching out, find out who is your elected official. You can pull up the track record on coj.net and see who they voted for. And you'll be surprised 
why they get on TV and say one thing, but they vote different. And I'm talking about African American leadership. And I have concerns about leadership overall, but as I have said many times, the way I was raised up, charity begins at home. Why need why our African American leadership not changing the paradigm in our community? Why? That's what we need to ask the question, why? Because there are things that a city council can do without the other 18 city council members. As a city council member, you can engage your community, the community leaders, to work on projects. And the job of the city council person is to bring those ideas to the members of city council to make decisions that need to be made for those communities all over Jacksonville. But when we talk about the African American community, unmet promises for 52 years, unmet, they continue to say, well, it's, it's money. Well, at the present time, the city of Jacksonville has money. When I'm in the meeting, they be talking about uh, the budget, a uh, fiscal budget is looking good. The, the sheriff uh, is getting money. Everybody across the board getting money for their community, but not African Americans, especially in their urban core. We'll talk about that later because there's some, a lot of gentrification taking place. But a lot of gentrification is caused by African Americans not working together. But I will talk about that later. Right now, the most important thing I want my people to understand is that the African American leadership in Jacksonville, Florida, don't care. Now, listen to what I'm saying. There's many things that's available to us. See, that's available to us. But the African American leadership failed to be able to bring the community leaders together. The investors, there's quite a few, uh, uh, what I call small investors, that can come together and leverage their resources. You hear me? Leverage their resources to do small or medium-sized infrastructure in Jacksonville. That's right. And develop businesses, not just jobs. If we take care of producing, developing, creating businesses in the African American community. Jobs will take care of itself. That's right. We, my main point at this point, now I want to look into the camera so my people can see me. I don't just see me, not, not, not just hear me, but see me. To understand, since 1975, the biggest thing holding us up back is the leadership. African-American leadership. 